In this talk, I'll be discussing the five unformalized scientific principles that B.F. Skinner outlined in his article, A Case History in the Scientific Method. Now, this case history was about some of the early research he did, where he realized that many of the steps in science aren't how they are traditionally conveyed in instruction about the scientific method. Now, some of his early research, his earliest research, was looking at how rats respond to unexpected sounds. And he created this apparatus, which had a tunnel that a rat could exit out of. And as the rat was about to exit, Skinner would make a clicking noise and observe how the rat responded. Skinner was interested in how the responses changed after repeated exposures to the clicking noise. Something else he noticed is that his rats had offspring, and he noticed those young rats had some interesting behaviors. For example, if he pulled gently on their tails, they would at first resist the pull and then spring into the air. And this was a fairly consistent behavioral pattern that he found most interesting. And so this got him to his first scientific principle, that when you run onto something interesting, drop everything else to study it. Now, this isn't advice per se, it's just kind of how scientists do their thing. And so he set about studying these young rats, and he created a new apparatus to do so. There was a surface that the young rat would lie on, and a uh, string would pull gently on the rat's tail. Now, when the rat responded to that pull, the surface that it was sitting on would shift, and that shift would activate a uh, scroll on a chymograph, and so he could, he could physically log the motions of the young rat responding to its tail being pulled. He also realized that he could modify this apparatus to go back to his original study of adult rats, and he found that prospect most interesting. So going back to that first principle, he abandoned this study. Well, he didn't necessarily abandon it, but he went right back to his first interest in the adult rats responding to noises. And so he created this apparatus with a tunnel on top. It doesn't show as a tunnel in this diagram, but it was a tunnel, and the tunnel could shift back and forth relative to the base. The base had a chymograph mounted on it, and the chymograph registered the forward and backward movement of that tunnel as the rat in the tunnel responded to clicks. And so it gave Skinner a means of documenting fairly directly how the rats behave to the clicking noise. But he also noted that it was a little bit tedious taking the rats from the end of the tunnel and replacing them at the start with the end of every trial. And so this got him to his second principle, that some ways of doing research are easier than others. And in this case, to get there, he developed a rather complex apparatus. So it's not simpler in design, but it's simpler in that he automated the process. So if you look on this diagram, there's a rat uh, getting some food, and after the rat got the food, it would proceed to the other end of the tunnel, which would cause the entire tunnel portion to tilt, because you can see there's a little fulcrum here. When it tilted, there was an arm that actuated a rotational motion on this uh, food magazine, and so it would drop a new food pellet when the rat was at the back of the run. And of course, the rat would work its way back to the front and collect that food pellet, starting the process over. And in constructing this apparatus, he found a wooden disc to serve as the food magazine. And, well, as luck would have it, because scientific principle number three, sometimes scientific discoveries come out of being in the right place at the right time, or finding the right wooden spool in the storeroom in the, in the psychology building. Um, he discovered that, yeah, this this wooden, this wooden uh, feed ma uh, magazine had a dowel on the top around which he could wrap a string, and that string could scribe on a chymograph. And so each time the food magazine ticked around, it would create a step on the chymograph. And so over the course of multiple trials, he would get a curve that looked like this. So initially the rat would um, 
get the food at much more regular intervals and then of course over time it would become more sated its appetite would or its hunger would decrease and the rate of cycling within the apparatus would decrease and he, he created a nice way to represent this process as a curve but being as complicated as this device was it eventually broke down and that led him to scientific principle number four well, sometimes your measurement instruments don't work as intended. Sometimes they break down. Now, in this case, he almost immediately reverted back to scientific principle number three, that sometimes scientists are just lucky because, as he reported, his first extinction curve, I'll tell you what that is in just a second, his first extinction curve showed up by accident. A rat was pressing the lever in an experiment on satiation when the pellet dispenser jammed. I was not there at the time, and when I returned, I found a beautiful curve. And, and so what happened essentially is the rat lost that reward for its behavior. That reward was part of classical conditioning. And something that happens in classical conditioning, after the reward is taken away, slowly over time, the animal unlearns the behavior and the rate at which that behavior is unlearned is an extinction curve. And he was able to observe this because by serendipity, which is scientific principle number five, the feeding mechanism broke and the rat was no longer receiving that reward for its behavior. And this, this was a a serendipitous discovery that this apparatus he had, when it failed to function as intended, created this nice discovery, and he had a very direct way of observing extinction curves. And so those were the, sci the five scientific, unformalized scientific principles that Skinner outlined. And just to clarify, by principles, it doesn't mean that these are guidelines or pointers or recommendations for conducting science. Rather, they're observations for how science tends to occur. And so if you watch my video about the wheel of inquiry, there's a lot of linkages between uh, Skinner's observations and the general notion of how scientists conduct research. There isn't a clear linear path to doing science. Rather, scientists need to look and see, pay attention to what's going on, and, well, take advantage of serendipity when it arises. And that's how science works. Thanks for watching.